I would not fuck with this. I don't like how you bite into it. It turns into like dust on your tongue. It's like a smarty. It's like a More smarty. like a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> that was stupid. Those of you who don't know, shoujo is a genre that is specifically catered to teenage girls. We actually became friends because I made a Tumblr for the Oron High School Host Club live action, which is based on a manga and anime. Basically a rom-com about a girl who has to pretend that she's a boy to join a host club, which is a club where, I don't know how to describe it in a way that's like, wow, they got away with it too. Who authorized that? Like, yes, this club. Totally okay. What do they even do? They service women by like serving them tea and being handsome and yeah. flirting with them. It's just like they're beautiful men. So like what what else are they going to do but service beautiful women? They're basically gigolos. If you're already weirded out by this, this video ain't for you. It's only going to go. It's only going to go down <laughs> from, from here. here. <laughs> to this day, we are still trash for shoujo. We are going to go through a couple of manga that we like to fit into the theme. Melody also has the Fruits Basket. <laughs> Get Japan Crate. 2019 Fruits Basket got a reboot. Japan Crate is a monthly subscription. There was a special collaboration with the new Fruits Basket reboot and I thought because I'm an adult and I can do whatever I want with my mm -hmm. money, like I'm gonna buy the hell out of this. That's what being an adult is for. That is what being an adult is for is buying your stupid Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's just I have money and I decided to spend it. So I love that journey for you. <laughs> I guess we can start off with just what's inside. Oh yeah. A lot. <laughs> yes. There oh no! Is. So since it is a collaboration with Fruit Sasuke and Japan Crate, these things were supposedly somehow related to the Fruit Sasuke characters. And we have this little pamphlet that will tell us. I wonder if they chose the candy and then they're like, okay, we gotta figure out how to connect it yes, to these characters. Yeah, probably, right? Because this guy has purple hair or something. Yeah, there like you that. go. I look like a floating head right now. <laughs> cuckoo, cuckoo Thai mint flavor. Stay cool with this refreshing takoyaki. That's not it, shit. Sugoi! It's airy mint flavor is perfect for summer. There we go. It lights up when I tap your face. <gasps> it's cute. <gasps> no! <laughs> I like it. It's like wafer crisp plus thin mints. I realize now we're gonna have to describe food instead of just being oh, like, shit. oh, it's yummy. So that's gonna be the Mikan mochi. Perhaps Momiji made this mochi, like the classic folklore about the mochi making rabbit on the moon. This looks so weird to me because this looks like the kind of candy that you would eat at raves, you know? Really? Like they all, oh. yeah. I don't know about this candy you would oh, eat at Rave. Me neither. <laughs> Let's take some Molly now. <laughs> It tastes like a gumdrop. It tastes like orange flavored gum that you can consume. You don't like it? I don't like gumdrops. Well, I'm trying to digest this gumdrop. I think I'm gonna start real simple with a one shot. It's called Sabaki no Man. If you are curious about getting into shoujo manga, this is a very short, non-committal way to see if this is like your thing. It is a one shot, meaning that it is just one chapter. It has a beginning and an end, and then you're done. You don't have to invest in this whole series. It is a one shot about this guy named Lance who is, oh shit. Shit, I don't even remember. <laughs> I made you read it a long time ago. So did you, you the memories wait, might come to you. Okay, maybe. When you die, you see two doors, right? <gasps> one door one door leads to heaven, I the other leads this. to hell. Yes. He is the one that is guarding one of the doors. The other guy is an angel uh -huh. who, who guards the other door. When you go up to the doors, you get to ask them like which one is the door that leads to heaven. Right. The angel will always tell the truth. The demon, which is him, will always lie. His goal is to get you you to hell. He has been like shackled to this door because he did some bad shit or something and that's his punishment. Mm -hmm. And the only way his punishment is done is if he can get 100 people, I believe, or 1,000 or whatever through the door to hell. He's finally like almost to the last person and then he can be free. But then something happens where his shackle starts like tugging at him and then he ends up dropping into earth. There he meets a girl who is very trustworthy like she's just the kind of girl who is very um ganky <laughs> she always like sees the good in others mm -hmm. she's an orphan of course so of course. she she lives with like these two cross-dressers for some reason but yeah. they're not like the main point of the story which i thought was kind of nice it's like yeah my guardians are cross-dressers a little you know what's the big something, deal something. revolutionary must i say <laughs> and so she helps him and takes him in because he can only lie he says shit about like how i lost my parents and he says some soft story that is obviously fake and she's just like 
you've been through so much. Oh my god. And so she helps them out. They end up having feelings for each other. And then there's this one part that really got to me, you know, and she smiles, the very wholesome smile that you only see in shoujo manga. And he almost says, like, he almost says that you're beautiful, but he cannot because he can't lie. No. And I'm like, oh, no. He doesn't want her to go to hell, even though getting that last person would make him free. And then you'll just have to read the rest to see. It's a very <laughs> short chapter. It was super cute and simple and sweet. If anyone watching this ends up reading it and then you end up liking it, that's a pretty good gauge that you are shoujo trash because it has, you know, the very generic love story and the very generic, like, art style, but it's yeah. still very cutesy. Choose which one you would like us to test next. Let's do this one. Kaiji Rico. Basically grape and soda. Why have one flavor when you can have two? This candy is double layered with grape on the outside and soda on the inside. I have to bite it. Is that okay? That's fine. We've done worse things together. Hmm. Hmm. I would not eat it again. Mm -mm. No. It's not bad. It's very sweet. If you like grape, you would like it. Mm -hmm. It tastes a little bit artificial to me, but it's good. Like it's not, it's not bad. Oh my God. You know what? Okay. I'm a little worried about that one. Why? Because it's, it's been out of, that's the cheese tea milk or tea oh, shit, cheese milk. Oh shit, this is cheese? Yeah. I thought it was going to be something like chocolatey. Afternoon tea, cheese, milk, tea flavor. How the hell is this cheese? It's brown. Or maybe it used to be yellow and now it's brown. Let's do it. Just a little sip. We can have an intermission <laughs> later to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Oh no. No, no, I'm scared. <laughs> this girl is like living her best life and is super carefree. I cannot relate, but that's why I like shoujo because I want to have that in my life. I'm scared. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> that doesn't taste like cheese. No, it doesn't. It just tastes like chocolate milk. Does it? I didn't like it. I'll do another taste. <laughs> Be bright for the both of us. Oh God, that was quite the gulp. You like it? That's what she said. It's okay. I wouldn't drink the whole thing no, if not. I had a choice. I didn't like it. But that. I don't mind. If someone forced me to, I would be like, yeah, that's fine. Since we're doing a fruits basket thingy, my bob, the first one that I'm recommending is one that's also by the same author, uh, Natsuki Takaya. It's called Twinkle Stars. Oh, Cindy's making me show the cover because I own it. Where are the stars and why are they twinkling? Shut up. Main character, she lives with her cousin. She is either an orphan or a foster kid. They always have to be orphans. Like, they can't be tied down by parental love and care. You can't be a main character if you have parents who love you. That's true. The main character lives with her cousin, but despite sadness, she always finds comfort in the stars by looking up at them and just seeing that they love and care for her. She meets this boy, mysterious boy. When they first meet, he's very kind to her, but then they separate ways and she's like left with this memory of like this boy who's very kind and she's just very taken with him. They meet again and he's just very mean. <laughs> Time. Oh my god. Um, and so she's like trying to figure out why and that's basically like the beginning. It's very slice of life. One of the things that I really really love about Natsuki Takuya is that she always has life lessons. There are a lot of things that are actually applicable to life and about like hope and not giving up. I find it very comforting. The situations that they're all in are very, you can sympathize with them. Oh, I just love Natsuki Takuya so much and this is definitely another series similar to Fruits Basket that I think if you open up your heart it can actually help you in your life. It sounds very sweet. Obviously a lot of young girls yeah. will read shoujo manga so it's nice for these kinds of stories to have like those lessons too. Yeah. A coming of age story. There you go. So I have this habit and Cindy has kind of picked up on it of looking up at the sky, looking up at architecture, just looking up and I'm, I've been telling Cindy all this week like look up, look up, look up. That's something that the main character does in this is she does look up at the stars, at the sky. The whole thing about Twinkle Stars is that she says that the stars are telling her you did good you're doing good we're proud of you so she's an astrologist the way that you describe it makes me feel like i'm the love interest that's like what's there to look at for the sky because is that what he's like he has his own issues and i don't same like i cried because i just felt i felt it in my heart i've seen people who are the same character as him and mm -hmm. it's just it breaks my heart it is very heartwarming it does have a happy ending so just putting that out there it is a little a little bit sad at times but it's good in the end let's do this one it's brown chocolate ginza rust oh my god look at the description what toru made this delicious chocolate treat for you <gasps> 
Oh my god. <laughs> These chocolate rusks are baked with rich chocolate and coated with cocoa powder to seriously curve your chocolate craving. It's getting hot in here. I know. So take off all your clothes. Okay. I guess I should go ahead and say it because like I feel like I want to fight everybody. That's go ahead. Crazy. You can declare war on this video. I, despite the fact that I have read the manga like tons of times and I've watched the original 2001 anime tons of times, I'm still a Yuki Toru shipper because I'm here to cause drama. Maybe people who are watching this might be Yuki and Toru shippers too. We can if try. You are <laughs> reach out, help. reach out, reach out because there are not that many. Here's the thing: when I watched the original, I was more into like Kyo, but that's because Yuki is not really my type. I don't like more feminine guys. Mmm. This one's good. Now that I have watched it with you and I'm hearing your propaganda about how <laughs> Yuki's always first, I'm like, you Yuki's know what? First. Yuki <clears throat> might be better for Toru. Because now is. I'm I'm re-watching the reboot now as an adult. And I'm like, dude, Kyo needs to get his shit together. Yeah, He's like yeah. always yelling and being mad. And I know he has trouble with his emotions, but like I'm that's a turn off for me. Yeah. I'm He's not like a fan. extremely emotionally constipated. Usually I like guys like that in fiction, not mm -hmm. in real life. But he's like too much for me. And we know he gets better. This is his art, but the heart wants what it wants, and my heart wants Toru and Yuki forever. I would say if I had to pick a dude, I think Hotori is very handsome. You mean hot Tori? Hot Tori. That was so embarrassing. <laughs> Maybe I just like him now because now I'm older and he's closer to my age. When we first, that's not even, we were younger when we first read Fruits Basket than the main trio's age, and now we're closer to the three musketeers who are like 26 and we're just like a little bit below. Them. The older dudes. Oh my god, that's how you know you're getting old because I'm like watching this shit now and I see the older guy yeah, characters and, you're and like, I'm like, hmm. wow, he's responsible. <laughs> he would do his taxes, you know? <laughs> you know what? Let's go with the chips. Matcha milk shimo choco. I am so sorry for all the butchering. I promise I am trying. We love your cultural appropriation. Potato salt and wasabi. <gasps> wasabi! Wasabi! <laughs> wasabi. Extra crispy chips are slow fried to keep them crunchy and packed with wasabi. 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 Flavor. Wasabi. They're just spicy chips. Cool. I might not like these. I'm not big on spicy. I like spicy stuff. Cindy likes spicy. I can kind of smell the spice really? right here. Yo, I taste the wasabi. I don't mind them, but it's not my favorite. I like wasabi mixed with soy sauce mm -hmm. for my sushi, but I don't think I like it as a chip flavor. They're okay. A little bit less than okay. They are not spicy though, in my no, opinion. No, no, but there is a little bit of a kick. Yeah, there is a kick. I kind of felt it going through my nose too, the way that wasabi. you usually feel when you taste wasabi. At first I was like, oh shit, is this legit? But then <laughs> it was just like very smooth, yeah. smooth transition to yeah. just regular chips. Look at us being chip connoisseurs. I know. Okay, yeah. second recommendation. Since the first one that I mentioned was more fantasy, I'm gonna switch over to something that's more contemporary. A manga that I really liked was called Daytime Shooting Star. Mm. It is about a high school girl who falls in love with her teacher. She also ends up in a love triangle between her teacher and her classmate. I avoided reading it for the longest time mm -hmm. because I do not like teacher-student romances. It does not appeal to me whatsoever. I just was never interested in teacher Teachers. Once I know that someone has an authority figure over me, yeah. I'm turned off by that because I'm the authority figure. I'm the boss. I'm the boss. <laughs> I could fall in love with my like assistant or my inferior, but I could not fall in love with my superior. That's the power dynamic <laughs> I would want. I just ran out of shoujo to read and Might I ended well. up reading it. I was like really, really pleasantly surprised that it was good. It was kind of romanticizing the relationship, but that was because it was from her perspective. It was showing how he wasn't good for her, not just the fact that he was a teacher and an older dude, but just the way that he was like handling it as an adult was like not cool. Most teacher student romances heavily romanticize it. This one I felt like a, was a realistic depiction. It still respected her feelings of like she really was in love with him, but it showed how yeah. they weren't good for each other either. Again, I do not like teacher student romances, but I really like this one. If that tells you anything. All three central characters, I liked them. And the art style was really cute. The main girl was really cute too. She had like a good head on her shoulders, but she was also like realistic in a sense where you're a kid and you can't help the way that you feel, but she learns through it all and she learns through the pain. There was this one scene in Daytime Shooting Star, the classmate that likes the main girl, he is basically being like a rude ass bitch 
oh to God. the teacher because yeah. he knows that there's something going on with the teacher. The teacher says, you should respect your teachers. And then the classmate gets up in his face and he's like, if you were a real teacher, you I wouldn't remember. be, if you were a real teacher, oh. you wouldn't be flirting with your student. And I was like, damn! I fucking love that classmate. He good. knew what was up. He loved her so much. It really called out that this shit wasn't okay. That's the thing with shoujo manga. You have to overlook a lot of things yeah. because for some reason, relationships between a young girl and an yeah. older guy it's is super common. And normalized. In Sailor Moon, oh. she was 14. <laughs> Cedo Mask was in college. Yeah. There's even a moment where like uh, Mamoru's friend, I forgot his name, but the blonde guy tells like Mamoru like who'd want to date a middle school like a middle school student uh, and he literally gets called out because he had just finished dating Ray and he was like crushing on he was either dating or crushing on Usagi so it it's you know yikes yeah. now when I read back on it I'm like ooh I don't <laughs> know about that chief which one would you like to test let's do jelly beans do you like jelly beans I have this weird thing where I don't like eating something that's small in my hand my weird brain is thinking if it's small in my hand that means like there's more germs that cover the entire thing. Oh. So when I was little, I would never share snacks with like <laughs> other kids. Sure, that's why. This is my color palette. Like the game Toru played as a child, these jelly beans oh. are like fruit baskets, strawberry, orange, grape. Okay, that's a stretch, that's but a all right. Fucking... Hopefully your fruit will get called into the circle to play. Joke's on you, I'm a fucking rice ball. <gasps> no, I like them. You like them? I like the strawberry one. If I had to pick my least favorite, I think it would be the jelly beans. Really? I'm only choosing this guy because I think this packaging is like really funny because this lemon guy is like, huh? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> the fuck? Pop open one of these mini bottles to sip on the powder flavored candy. Receive one of three flavors, cider, strawberry, lemon. We got lemon. Ooh. Yo, I think this one would be nice. Okay, I'll, nice. I'll pick that later. Okay, ready? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. It tastes like Smarties, but like crumbled up Smarties. It's too sweet for me. I would think it'd be a little more sour. It's not. It's more like lemony sweet. Now you talk about your second one. Okay, so this one is definitely a guilty pleasure. It's going to be D and Angel by you. <laughs> DNA Angel by Yukira Sujisaki. That actually has to be one of my favorite ones. This 14 year old boy, Daisuke Niwa, wakes up on his 14th birthday and tries to confess his love to this girl, Risa Harada, who has a twin. Kind of important, kind of not. She has a sister, twin sister, Riku. Um, she gets rejected. So he's very heartbroken over this, you know, goes through his day, goes home, and transforms into this notorious art thief named Dark. Apparently, it's like in his genetics from like generations and generations and generations that all the men in their family when they turn 14 years old they have the ability to turn into this phantom thief dark who steals artwork is this a metaphor for puberty there's a family curse oh, oh my sorry. god i was so confused i was like are they knocking no. um, stop being weeboos <laughs> you're being too loud you fucking nerds <laughs> Because his dad is not in the picture, his mom lets him know that you have to continue turning into this phantom thief at night, stealing these artwork until your true love loves you fully in return. Then dark will disappear. Wow, I, I would be fucked if I were the main guy. If, like, I'd be somebody like, had to like love you back. I know, I'd be like, damn, I hope you like darkness because that's <laughs> all we're gonna get. I love the world building of this universe because these artworks have so much feeling in them that they come to life. Sometimes they're terrible the city sometimes they're about to awaken so they need to steal them before they awaken so they can like shut them down I do find this a guilty pleasure she sets things up to be something really really good and then she just wraps it up super quickly and I'm just like that was it that you could have like, done so much more than that it had so much potential I still love it so much still like I overlook all of that that's why you're friends with me too yeah have you heard or read of Kamikaze Kaido Jean that kind of reminds me of that I tried reading it because that's by another um Aruna that arena arena Tanamaru, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. I know all this stuff. Shit. We uh -huh. So this was not going to be one of the ones that I would have talked about, but mm -hmm. I did like it. Yeah. I actually made my AIM screen name, Kaido Jean 95. Oh I don't know why Nerd. I named it 95, because I was born in 94. Yeah. So. I think 94 was taken, so I turned 95. <laughs> I was like, all right, let's round up to the next number. I guess I'll plug it in.
again, because we're <laughs> talking about something similar, it's like about this girl who is actually the reincarnation of Joan of Arc. It's kind of like a magical girl show as well because she's a regular high school girl, but she transforms into yeah. her phantom thief alter ego. She also has to steal paintings. Oh. These paintings have been possessed by demons. Oh, okay. When the demons possess the paintings, they also possess, I guess, the person that's like really close to the painting, like the museum curator or whoever. When that happens, they turn into an awful person. By stealing the painting, she's able to release like the demon. The victim turns back to normal again. But she's still considered a thief, so the police are always like looking out for her. The story begins with her finding out she has a rival named Sinbad. He's like another thief that's trying to steal the same artwork that she's trying to steal. And she believes that he's the bad guy. You read it all the way through? Yes, I, I did. I can only read the first volume. I think I got really bored with it. I That's think fair. Artwork is also very important to me. Like the kind... The Their eyes are fucking huge. Yeah, Arena Tamaru has the habit of like making their eyes like super big. Their eyes are like... Okay, <laughs> if this was like the character's face, their eyes would be like here. Yeah. Let's do Orange. Here, you hold it up. To That's me. another good manga. Orange? Yeah. I haven't watched it. I decided not to mention Orange because I feel like majority of BookTube already knows about Orange. Oh. It is a good manga though, and I cried reading the last chapter. Really <laughs> I'm emotionally can. constipated, okay? <laughs> Nikon slices in a can, just like you can buy in your Japanese supermarket, except they're even better because these are cute slices of chewy and juicy Nikon gummy. I don't understand how any of this, I guess it's because they're fruit related, right? Oh. Fruits Basket, fruit item. Okay, I mean, that's a stretch, but all right. Yeah. This looks like another um, gumdrop. Gumdrop. Mmm, is. I don't like gumdrops. These are okay. You can tell they're kind of like artificial flavor, mm -hmm. though. It just tastes like a vitamin gummy. Like a super citrusy, orangey, fake, artificial flavored. One time, I stopped taking vitamin gummies, and my coworker thought because I stopped taking them, that's why I'm depressed. And I was like, that's not how it works. <laughs> if only, right? <laughs> Just I like, eat, oh. gummy, I'm like, oh, cool. Now I'm happy. Yeah. I'm gonna pick this. This is actually the matcha milk uh, cookies. A fan favorite snack now in a new limited flavor. Bittersweet flavor combo in Japan. Oh, bittersweet? Yeah, I guess we'll see. Just like my life. Just like that music video we watched of That's Oron. Right. Oh my god. That I cried watching. Yes. <laughs> they smell good though. I like the matcha smell. I like, I like green tea. Oh. Yeah, I fuck with these. One more? Yeah. No, they're good. They do taste a little bit like wafer. That's actually, it's good. Actually, yeah. I think this is the best one so far. Mm -hmm. I guess since I mentioned orange, I'll talk about it. Okay. It is another high school story about this girl who receives letters from her future self. You don't know what it is about? Mm -hmm. <gasps> Ooh, okay. So I'll tell I you. I know that it's popular because I've seen like all sorts of gifs on Tumblr about it. The main girl always writes in her diary. This is relevant to later because she gets letters from her future self that is telling her what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And her future self is able to do that because she has like you know her diary entry so she remembers like the specific days on when it would happen when she first gets a letter she thinks it's like a prank bro but a lot of the stuff that the letters say like ends up happening like the letter says that she will be late to school which happens the letter says that you will meet a new boy in school because there is a new student. Her future self is writing to her because she has had many regrets with how she dealt with things because the main girl is the type of girl who, she's very like passive and she's afraid to take risks. Mm -hmm. But her future self is saying that like, I regret a lot of the things that I didn't do. I want this to be a second chance for you to do that. It's a very cute manga about the group of friends too. They have like their own little squad. The letter tells her, don't invite him to hang out after school. But the friend group does anyway. And she is like too, Shy to say anything about it because you know you can't be the bitch that's like um <laughs> let's not hang out with him they have like a good time mm -hmm. and so she's like oh i wonder why that letter told me not to do that but then the next day he's not in school anymore and so he doesn't show up to school for like the next two weeks and she's like does it have anything to do with the letter he shows up to school after the two weeks and then he just says that like he was sick it's revealed early on that the reason why he did not show up to school was because his mother had committed suicide she actually did it when he was hanging out with the group oh of friends. My Oh my god, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, I know, it, it, yeah. Oh. And so, this is something that is revealed in the ending of episode one and mm -hmm. the first chapter, is that she looks ahead in the letters and her future self is saying, Kakaru is no longer with us which means that something happened to him, probably by his own doing, hint, hint. Her future self is saying like, I wish I was there for him, but this is like her second chance to save him because he was going through like this depression over losing his mom and the guilt of it. Her present self now has to like try to save him. And like, it gets, 
Oh man, just that alone. I'm like feeling it. Like, I know, I know. I thought it was, you know, a realistic depiction of depression to see like what he was going through. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, there was like this one chapter. You get to see the whole story through his perspective and you see what had happened at home. It was a very accurate portrayal of depression. The way that like his mind was thinking everything throughout the story, like he feels like he doesn't deserve to be happy because, you know, you know, his mom had you know but it's like a very cute like slice of life story at the same time because the friends care about each other so much they want to help him out and she wants to help him out and i think it's like a good manga about mental health i wouldn't say it's like super depressing because it, yeah. it's kind of like fruits basket a very serious traumatized theme. It, yeah it balances out the serious themes of depression and trauma yeah. with this very cutesy friend like group hope Yes, with hope. Let's do this one because, oh no, it's grape flavor. Uh-oh. The packaging is cute. These grape gummies are squishy like mochi. They also use Japanese grape juice as a recipe for the strong and tasty flavor. I oh, mean, they smell good. I don't hate any of them. They're kind of glittery. I like that. Oh. I don't like this texture. Oh, I don't mm -mm. like this texture. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Mm -mm. <laughs> Anymore. What did you do? <laughs> what did you do to us? <laughs> Would not fuck with that. No. It's kind of sour. The flavor is not bad. The texture. I just felt like goop in your mouth. At least that's what I felt like. Like sticky goop. And I, I just, I don't, oh, that did not Ooh. feel good. I don't like the aftertaste. I can still taste it in my throat. Oh, you poor thing. Let's do something else then. Brahmini sour grape. Jesus. <gasps> okay, everyone's favorite Japanese soda in fizzy candy form. Now in a new grape flavor. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Friendship kidding. is made stronger when you experience hardships together. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely one of the hardest things we've gone through. <laughs> Your privilege is showing. You know how I feel about small things. Hey, this looks like another pill that you would take at a rave. Not that I would know. Mmm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I would not fuck with this. I don't like how you bite into it. It turns into like dust on your tongue. It's like a smarty. It's like a smarty. More like a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> I know. Turns out I'm the dummy. <laughs> Your recommendation. Oh, my last one was gonna be NG Life. I'm not entirely sure what NG stands for. I'm pretty sure I think not it looked good. good. I think it was, yeah, I think oh. it was not good life. Oh my god, so, is this about me? Um, my biography. <laughs> this manga made me obsessed with Pompeii because that's what it is. These characters are reincarnations of people who have lived in Pompeii. And it's basically about this boy who remembers his past life and as he's meeting these characters that he knew back when, but their dynamics are different. For example, one of the biggest things and you'll find out right away like it's literally the first few pages of the manga is that he had a love interest back in Pompeii his love interest is now a teenage boy um, oh. yeah and so but he's still like because he does remember his past life and he still remembers the love that he has I don't want to say he's in love with him but he does that's, that's something he does struggle with and now he's gay <laughs> I'm obsessed with reincarnation I love the idea of it but I also like kind of believe in it and it is a little bit slice of life with would this be like mythology or like fantasy? I love that because it's kind of exciting. The whole like him meeting a new person and then remembering how they were, comparing basically like who they are now. I think it's interesting that genders change in that because yes. I feel like- Not all of them. Again, you find this out in the first few pages. His parents in the current time, his mom was his sister in Pompeii. Oh. Then his dad was like his worst rival in Pompeii. Wow. Yeah. And now here they're happily married and love him. So like, yeah, it's like Whoa, that. that's And then cool. his best friend friend is actually a woman now. It's just finding out like his slice of life going through this and then him finding his feelings for his old true love and also like having to live and it's it's just really really good. I do love contemporary and then I do tend to love a little bit of like mythology. I love like kind ancient of... Rome and um, I love Pompeii. The, the whole like civilized advanced civilization just with one volcano just disappeared. I just, I love that. That does And the artwork is pretty because the artwork is very important to me. I'm really fascinated by the idea of like the roles that they yeah. were in your previous life are now yeah. like different in your real life mm -hmm. and like how gender is like very fluid too, yeah. which is really interesting. It doesn't get too dark. I would definitely recommend that if it sounds interesting. I'm going to have to look that up now. Okay, which one? Uh, the big one. King's Melon Bread. Melon Bread is popular in Japan. It is often available in school stores and it is your turn to try it. You want to see how they connected this one? What? This sweet and crunchy taste will transport you into Toru's classroom. Stupid! <laughs> but this looks like it would be good. Yeah. Kind of dry. <laughs> oh, whoa. There's something inside. What? 
Oh my god. What is that, chocolate? Mm hmm I kind of wish it was softer. Mm hmm I was a little worried at first, but no, it's good. It's not my favorite, but it's good. I think it's a bit too dry for me. Mm -hmm. I'll go with this. Boontang candy. Traditional candy started in the 1970s. Each chewy piece is wrapped in rice paper that will melt in your mouth. So do you just stick the whole thing in your mouth? I guess so. We're gonna look like idiots if like we stick these in our mouth. We start choking. <laughs> okay, I think... Wow, this is... Wait, did you open it? I cracked paper. Wait, are you sure? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This feels so wrong. Are you really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're I, right. I don't like it though. There's good stuff in your teeth. Mm -hmm. I don't mind it. It's too orangey for me. It's an orange kind of flavor that I don't like. I have to work too hard for it. I yeah, and okay. then I get the feeling that it's gonna get stuck in my teeth, and I don't, I don't like. I literally be just like with my tongue the rest of them. I'm still chewing on it. Yeah. My last recommendation. Yes. Is called Basara. This was a manga that was made in the 90s, so it has like typical 90s shoujo art. Usually I do not like 90s shoujo art, but I like this one. I thought it was like very beautifully drawn. It is basically about a post-apocalyptic world. It takes place in Japan where like everything is basically like the desert now. When the main girl was born, she was born with a twin brother and there was a prophet that told the village that she oh. lived in that one of the twins would grow up to be the hero that would take down the tyrannical king. The whole village thinks it's the boy that's the chosen one. Growing up, she was always used to being in his shadow. He was always hailed as like the hero, the savior. Mm -hmm. This is not a spoiler because this happens in the first chapter. When they become 16, there is a village raid where the Red King shows up and basically sets fire to the village and like kills them. Her brother ends up dying. She is basically watching this go in flames, but then the prophet is there. He tells her something, I don't remember, but she basically decides to cut her hair. She emerges like, from the ruins after the whole mess is over. She tells the village that the brother mm -hmm. is actually alive and it was Sarasa. Who died. Yeah, Sarasa is her name. It was Sarasa who actually died. She sacrificed her life. I, the brother, mm -hmm. am still alive. That gives hope to the village that things can still be okay. She sets off on a journey pretending to be her brother to go kill the Red King. She basically has to throw away her life and to become this brother instead. I thought that was really cool because it was a reversal of the chosen one trope. However, there is a twist, which is not a spoiler because this is also revealed very early on. She has to pretend to be the brother like the whole time and pretend to be like this brave soldier. But there are some moments where she allows herself to be a girl and that's only when she visits like the hot springs to like, you know, bathe or whatever. She meets like this guy there. Of course. He's like super handsome, but he's also arrogant. She meets him whenever she's a girl because the, the hot springs are just, like where they always like see each other. But also she keeps on like, running into him whenever she's going like around her little journey mm -hmm. to kill the Red King. So it turns out, and this is revealed again in like the first chapter or the second chapter, the guy that she meets is actually the Red King. He has never seen the face of the brother and she has never seen the Red King's face either. So they don't know what the other actually looks like. They only know that the other needs to die. Oh my God. Because of what they represent. But whenever they are their true selves, like when she is a girl and when he is no longer a king, they are able to like meet and then they fall in love. This is something that like only the reader knows. I liked the romance though, because I felt like it wasn't trying to justify what the guy did. I don't know how to describe it. And, and also because I don't quite remember the details he isn't supposed to be like a good guy. It's not one of those things where it's like, oh, but he's a good guy all along or like, oh, he'll change or whatever. I mean, he does change, but there were certain things that have made him ruthless. Even though he did these horrible things, he doesn't like regret it either. He's still like himself without sacrificing like, oh, he was a good guy all along or some shit like that. So I thought that was like well done because usually in order to justify a romance, you have to be like, oh, he was a good guy all along, or like, oh, he had his reasons. But no, he was like an asshole too. Right. It's like this epic, like over a hundred chapters long saga. Very dramatic, very angsty, but also I thought it was well done. This is a hard ball that I don't think we can both try. Do you want to try it then? It's an apple. And it tastes like an apple hard candy. But do you like it? No. <laughs> they should have just had rice balls. Uh-oh, what is that? Gum. I'm scared. Mmm. 
Mm -mm. I don't know. I don't know about that, Chief. This blue one was this one. It's just gum. It doesn't taste too good. Well, we got through with them all. Yeah, we did. I definitely did not like the orange, like, gumdrop. This one, it's not orange. It's lemon. Not my, not my, not my candy. My favorite one is definitely going to have to be the matcha. Yes, me too. Or the chocolate ones. The chocolate ones are pretty good, too. These were my favorite. My least favorite was the one where it was, like, an orange cube, but it had, like, those white dots on it because mm -hmm. of, like, the texture. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to unsubscribe for my channel. Melody does not have an active YouTube channel, so no. I can't plug you. I've been trying to convince her to start a booktube channel, but she will not. I don't think I read enough books. That's I, okay. I literally, I think I read like two books a month and that's, that's like fine. a stretch for me. You can Plus, do like individual book reviews. I like like, you know, filming more like slice of life. Like, oh, like vlogs? My very boring life. You've also told me that, like, you're afraid you're not coherent in your book reviews. I, and I'm sure you guys will see in this, like, sometimes my brain just, like, gets really, really jumbled. And, like, my words just don't make sense. And I'm just like, am I having a seizure? Like, what is happening? Because, like, I literally, I say things and I'm like, none of those words were meant to be put. I shouldn't be rambling about this. See? I told you this and I'll tell you now. A lot of booktubers don't even fucking make any <laughs> sense when they talk in their videos either. Like, so, it's not like they have good quality I'm videos. in great company, right? Yeah. Yeah, anyway, mm -hmm. I just want to say this to cause drama. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, who is she talking about? Okay, goodbye. Bye. Maybe you're the last